unless we know who has it. We can't send people back to work unless we know who has it. And you're right to point out that, yes, there's a raw number, about 2 million tests. We, we've done more than anybody else, but we're in a country of 325 people. So per capita, we're not even close. And the reality is it's a long road to testing everybody who needs to be tested. And that's a difficult thing to tell the American people that this is going to go on longer. As he sees his approval ratings slip, as he sees the unemployment numbers come in again, he knows this is headed in a bad direction. It's already in a bad place and getting worse. And he believes by starting the economy again, that somehow will turn it around when a public health official would tell you the opposite. It might reignite the coronavirus crisis in some places. Let's talk to one of those experts right now. Joining us, director of the Harvard Global Health Institute, Dr. Ashish Jha. He's a practicing physician, also a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. Dr. Jha, great to have you with us again. I just get you to react to the president's characterization of testing as something that would be nice to have, but it's not necessary. Yeah, so, um, Willie, thanks, and all of you guys, for having me back on. Um, so everybody else has led with this, and I'm going to lead with this. We cannot open up our economy without adequate testing. So let's just think about what would happen if we did. Let's say May 1st, we open the doors, everybody's back to work. It'd be great for a few weeks. For a few weeks, we wouldn't notice it at all. And then you would see massive flare-ups of cases across the country. All the hard work that Americans are doing will have been wasted. And we will have to shut down again, and we will shut down for much longer. So if that's what we want to do, then yeah, sure, let's open up May 1st without adequate testing. But the right answer is, and again, to quote Dr. Fauci, we don't make the timeline, the virus makes the timeline. So let's wait until the viral levels are really low in our country. Let's have a very robust testing system. Then let's open up slowly. And I actually think we can stay open, which is what Americans want. We do not want to have to shut down again. So, Dr. Jha, uh, we've talked about all these issues, the personal protective equipment, uh, but testing really is the first thing that we hear from doctors like you who are experts in this area. Um, what does a national testing system look like? Obviously, that's a long road to get all everyone in this country tested. We know that because right now it's a patchwork of private laboratories and companies coming up with a concept. Some of them are quick. Some, some of them are still in development. How do we get everyone tested much more quickly than we are right now? Yeah, so what we do need is, is a national coordination, right? So um, every state has different barriers. I mean, there are states that can't test because they don't have enough swabs. And I sort of, like, I shake my head thinking, we've shut our economy down because we don't have enough swabs? But yep, that's the problem in some states. Other states don't have reagents. Some states don't have infrastructure. And the point of a national strategy is that we need a federal government that coordinates, that makes sure that all these barriers are going away. The tests are going to be local, but the bottom line is we're not going to get the kinds of tests we need. And I say not every American needs a test, but everybody who needs a test needs to be able to get that test. And we are far away from that. And we're not going to get there through 50 different state strategies. We need a national strategy. Dr. Jha, let me ask you about the flattening of the curve that we seem to have witnessed at, as Governor Cuomo holds these news conferences in hospitalizations. Obviously, the deaths are spiking. The governor has talked about that as a lagging indicator of how to read where this is headed. What do you see in some of the numbers coming out of New York City where hospitalizations, at least, are way down? What does that tell you? Yeah, so uh, I think Dr. Fauci said this earlier, and let me amplify. Um, the incredible hard work that Americans are doing, staying home. I know staying home, having the economy shut is very painful, but it is working, and it's working in New York. Uh, it's working in California. It's working in Washington State. It's working in Ohio. It's working wherever we're doing it right. Uh, it is painful. And by the way, the number of 60,000 deaths, and I, it's great. Fewer Americans dying is always better. It's more people than died in Vietnam. Like, this is still a tragedy, um, and we've got to stay home and try to get those numbers even lower if we can. All right. Dr. Ashish Shah, thank you, as always, for your insights. Good to see you this morning. Joe? And let's go to Jim Van Dye. And, Jim, uh, we just uh, we keep going back to it because every medical expert that we have on, every doctor we have on, mm. says you can't open the economy without proper testing. And for some reason, and I mean, I'll just be honest, I've, I've been talking to the White House over the past month, just hammering home testing. You have to get testing done. It's a trillion dollar mistake. 
to not have this testing done. But you look at the story of the failure of this administration. You can go back into February where the FDA went to Trump CDC and said, if you were a private entity, I would shut you down. You're so bad. Two days later, the FDA gave up on the Trump administration and said, OK, we'll allow private companies to go ahead and start testing. Uh, we had Dr. Burks just the other night saying 80 percent of these testing machines were out of use across the nation. She didn't know why. She 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 said she was going to she seemed pretty upset about it and said she was going to check and see why 80 percent of testing machines were not in use. And then we just heard the good doctor say that. In some cases, what, what was his exact quote? We're going to really shut down our economy because we don't have enough swabs? Like, this is the president's patchwork approach that has led to disaster when it comes to testing, and it's a trillion-dollar mistake. And, Jim, what I can't understand is why he still doesn't get it, why he still doesn't understand that our economy is going to lose trillions and trillions more dollars. And more Americans are going to go bankrupt in the future until he gets testing right and people know they can go back into the workforce safely. There's no doubt that had the government moved a lot faster, had Trump moved a lot faster on testing, on supplies, on preparing hospitals, that we'd be in a way better position to be able to return to work at a, at a much quicker time frame. I do think the debate inside the White House is a little more nuanced than some of the reporting uh, overnight. Uh, there's no doubt that the president wants to get like some parts of the economy going in early May. I've not heard of anyone saying it would happen uh, in April. And most people inside the White House think it would be mid-May. May to late May. And I'll tell you what he's hearing, like why he's reacting the way he is. He is getting calls from Fortune 500 CEOs every single day warning that there's going to be not only like economic catastrophe, but then for him personally, political catastrophe if the economy is not up and running, at least big parts of it, in June. What they're warning is, is you've got unemployment headed towards 13 to 15 percent. You've got small businesses that didn't get that infusion of cash quick enough. They're just not coming back. And that if you sit idle for two months, that, that as much as a quarter of the economy might be hard to resuscitate on any plausible time frame. Uh, Stephen Moore, who's, who's been an advisor to him, so has been telling him, listen, you've got four to eight weeks to get this right or you're going to lose uh, re-election. So there, the, part of this debate, while it's uncomfortable, it does have to happen. Like at some point, some yeah. parts of the economy have to return. And what you guys are saying is totally correct. The, the quickest, easiest way to do that is to have testing because the worst possible outcome is that you restart the economy and then all of a sudden you have a massive resurgence of, of the virus and you have to go back sure. into this mode. That would be catastrophic and something we probably couldn't recover from for years.